Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the difference between greedy methods and dynamic programming. But first, let's take a step back and have a look at what dynamic programming is trying to achieve. Imagine you're working in a shop. A customer makes a purchase and you have to decide what coins to give them as change. This is a problem known as the coin change problem. If we needed to make change for 60 cents, you could do this in many ways. For example, we could take a 50 cent coin and a 10 cent coin. We could take three 20 cent coins and we could even take 12 5 cent coins. This is a pretty simple example. But what happens if we had to make change for 61 cents? This obviously isn't possible, but if you're trying to solve this with a computer, you might end up having to try all the different combinations before you can find this out. This is a naive approach known as brute force. We call this approach the brute force method as it tries to exploit the raw processing power of the computer to solve complicated problems. But if we increase the amount we need to make change for, or the number of coins that we're considering, the computation cost in doing this starts to get out of hand really quickly. So it becomes necessary to look for more efficient algorithms to solve this problem. So the first optimization we're going to try is the greedy method. In the greedy method, we're going to take the locally optimal decision at each step towards our goal. For the coin change problem, this means we're gonna take the coin that takes us closest to zero. So for 60 cents, first we're gonna take a 50 cent coin which leaves us with a remaining balance of 10 cents. We can then solve the problem by taking a 10 cent coin. In the real world, people naturally use greedy methods when creating change, and our currencies generally use denominations that work well for this by design. But in computer science, we wanna solve for the general case. Imagine if we now only have a 50 cent coin and a 20 cent coin. To make change for 60 cents, we'll first take the 50 cents, and then there's nothing we can do. As we saw earlier though, we could have used three 20 cent coins for this purpose, so the greedy approach has been broken by this input. The name of the greedy approach comes from the fact that it doesn't understand delayed gratification. For some problems this can work really well, and in fact sometimes it can be guaranteed to be optimal. But for coin change, this is clearly not the case. With the brute force approach, it was almost like we were trying to find a needle in a haystack. We exhaustively searched the state space looking for a solution, and sometimes we had to check every combination just to find that there was no solution. The good news is that very few problems actually require such an algorithm. Recognize that with the coin change problem, if we take two five cent coins or one 10 cent coin, we're in the same position. The same occurs with 50 cents or 10 times five cent coins and many other combinations. A lot of the inefficiency of the brute force approach comes from having to recalculate such combinations. Dynamic programming solves this problem by breaking down the larger problem into smaller sub-problems. If we know how to make change for 50 cents, it's quite trivial to make change for 60 cents, and this pattern continues. If we could make change for $142, then to make change for $142.35 is no longer a daunting task. It's just as easy as making change for 35 cents. Problems that can be solved in this way are said to have an optimal substructure and they can be solved using dynamic programming. Instead of viewing the state space as a big blob of combinations, for dynamic programming, it's gonna be useful to view this problem as a number line. For more complicated problems, you might need to think of them as a 2D table. This number line for the coin change problem is gonna start from zero cents and go up to 60 cents. Since we need subproblems, it's no longer sufficient to just check if we can make change for 60 cents. Instead, we're now going to be looking for the most change we can make up to some i, where i ranges from 0 to 60. This is called the subproblem definition. The overall solution we are looking for can now be found by checking if t of 60 is equal to 60. That is, if we can make 60 cents from the denominations available. We solve these subproblems through a recurrence relation. This is done in a way that is mathematically recursive. That is, we use previous entries of t to solve it. First, we're going to set up the base case. The most change we can make for zero is zero, and this is independent of the denominations available to us. For i greater than zero, we're going to look back at each type of coin available, and look back at the subproblem solution assuming we take that coin. We can then take the max across those coins. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at the case that caused problems to the greedy method. At t of 60, there are two types of coins we can use, 50 and 20. With 50, 
the maximum change we're going to be able to make is 50, plus however much change we can make with 10. T of 10 is equal to 0, as this amount is less than 20 and 50, however, so we end up with 50 cents overall. With 20 cents, we're going to be able to make 20, plus however much change we can make with 40. Unlike at T of 10, however, at T of 40, we can similarly take 20, as well as however much change we can make at T of 20, which of course is also 20. This means that T of 40 becomes 40, and T of 60 will become 60, giving us the optimal value. For demonstration purposes, it's useful to work down from 60 in a way kind of like I just did then, but typically you're going to see this calculated bottom up, starting from T of 0 and increasing up to 60, ensuring that we only have to look back at pre-calculated values. What should stand out about this is that with each table entry, we're taking an optimal value, not unlike what we did with the greedy method. The difference, however, is that for each possible action, we are looking at an optimal result for the sub-problem we are looking back at. In turn, these sub-problems are also looking back at the optimals for their sub-problems. Unlike greedy methods, due to this optimal substructure, it guarantees that we're going to get the optimal result for the entire problem. If you are taking a class where you're learning about dynamic programming, you're going to be expected to provide algorithms that can find the global optima. You're probably also going to be expected to write recurrence relations and maybe pseudocode for these algorithms too. Something to be careful about though is that sometimes it's possible to create what is actually a greedy algorithm using the same notation as dynamic programming. These solutions would not be dynamic programming solutions and they might not find the optimum values, so making this mistake could be detrimental to your grade. Here's a few tips and some red flags to watch out for to avoid this. First, if you're provided examples with your questions, don't forget that you're trying to solve for the general case, not the examples that were provided. Remember what happened with the coins example. By removing a few types of coins, suddenly the greedy solution failed. So you should still use and test with the examples provided, but try to break your algorithms with variations on them and new test cases. Next, don't sort the inputs or worry about the ordering of inputs. If the order of the inputs matters, then it's a big red flag that your algorithm is probably greedy. Next, consider each action for a table entry and make sure that you're appropriately looking back in the table each time you're doing this. Short circuiting of loops is another potential red flag that you might have a greedy algorithm. It's generally also not necessary in algorithms classes because the focus is usually on worst case big O runtimes, where short circuiting a loop isn't going to change it. Finally, practice, practice, practice. The more dynamic programming problems you solve, the better at it you'll get you'll be able to recognize how to approach new problems. In summary, greedy methods take optimal moves which might come at the cost of finding the optimal solution. Dynamic programming flips this and takes optimal moves that factor in optimal values for subproblems when considering the optimality of a move. Greedy methods may not find the optimum value for certain problems. Dynamic programming always will. I hope you learned something from this video. This is my first video, and on this channel I'm going to be creating content about algorithms and computer science. If you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel, and I'd love to hear any feedback you have in the comments section. Thanks for watching.